Hello and welcome back to September 1925, episode 21 of Rule the Waves 2 German Brawlers on the verge of war with Russia. Pretty much finished up this turn at the end of last episode, so all I have to do is set the next turn. And there it is, war is broken out. Battleship engagement. Route number not quite 2 to 1. Lock it in. Ah, the blue sure. Our raiders are screening us, which is crazy. Put them in a support role. A battle cruiser scouting fleet. Well, that are set for independent, but AI controlled. Can you scout for the battle division? That would be great. Thanks. Then the carrier will support the battle division. We will keep at medium. Fine with the search pattern being default. With that, we'll move ahead. Oh, I forgot to draw, draw a deck on the blue shirt. I should have done that. I don't know why I didn't think of it. As nighttime falls. No contact. Lost one of our subs. And we just barely missed them. From the looks of it. Right then, we'll call it a draw. I have a bit of money. We'll let it accrue up for now. Very odd name. Still working up. We'll get our light cruisers on rating status. Keep them in Northern Europe. Destroyers are all moving out. Our Corvettes can all go to Trade Protection. Which they look to be... yeah, their ASW is a little bit better now that I've removed the minesweeping gear. I think that's all we really need to do. And that we should get engagements with all these ships. Bondertans, I may send out to Northeast Asia. I don't think we can invade though. Yeah, we're way far from being able to raid Russian territory. But the Bondertans really aren't meant to be on the battle line anymore. I'll send them to Northeast Asia. And the Graf Spees are a bit uh, old. Send them to the Mediterranean and we'll focus on using our Helgelands and Mackinsons. They're both also old, but not as old. I've been saying we really need to update all of our ships. Or just build all new ones, which is what I want to do. Especially new Dreadnoughts, we don't have enough. Better 13 inch guns. All right, a little better than what we did with France. Another fleet battle in Gotland. I 
we're looking at pretty much identical to the last time. Let's get the battle cruisers on the battle division scouting. Move the carriers. Should already be on support. Cap should be medium. Everything's looking good so far. Um, find some ships right away. Go to 18 knots and bring the battle cruisers into core, support, directly support the dreadnoughts. And the carriers are going to take gunfire. Nope. That'll work. Mackinsons are getting shots in on the enemy battle line. Mackinson takes a hit. That's just fine. Bring the battle fleet up to battle speed. like we have a boatload of battle cruisers. Niobe takes a hit. Oh, we're about to see daylight, so I'm going to come broadside to them. Atkinson bounces. That's uh, those medium guns, though. Got a couple 14-inch shells into them. Niobe, belt hit, bounced is it. So we're doing well at that range with that armor and angle. Got a hit in on the Kirov class, which looks to be six 15 inch guns, 10 and a half inch belt. The deck looks like two and a half. This should be more than sufficient. Oh, wrong gun. That's right, we have to upgrade our 14 inch guns. Two and a half, 18,000 yards. So we should really just close in. Kirov takes another hit. Ismail takes two 11 inch. Gazelle takes an extended. All right, we are seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten battle cruisers. See if we can get close to the Fokshani. Took a 14 inch shell. Helgeland loses their bridge. Wow. I feel like that happens way too often. Shani's coming around. He has submerged torpedo tubes. She looks a little bit older. 14 inch guns, two turrets. Braunschweig is on fire. Not getting any primary hits on the Fokshani. I would have expected that. There's one. Two. Penetrating hit into the Braunschweig's belt. Heavy hits on the Helgeland and Braunschweig. Braunschweig losing speed. Fokshani takes a heavy hit. Ronchwick loses her bridge. There's a lot of gunfire. Another 14 inch shell on the Fokshani. And. Getting mostly secondary rounds. 
I know there's a lot of disabled turrets on the Braunschweig. Helgoland is still recovering. Braunschweig's down 17 knots. Mostly due to those perforated uptakes. Get the battle cruisers involved. There we go. A couple hits into the Fokshani. Another one into the Ishmael. Alright, we finally lost a turret on the Braunschweig. We're on a little fire, mostly 11 inch guns from the battle cruisers. Swing back around. Oh, but too late. I'm starting to get a little worried about that. Okay. Slower speed. Come back around. Trani takes a couple of hits. Medium damage. Two more hits on the Fukshani. Another one. Now we're starting to hit like we're we're used to. Braunschweig detaches of her own volition. And is increasing speed now. Trani takes another heavy hit. Two more. Two more. There we go. That's that's good amount of fire into the Fokshani. The Braunschweig doing still increasing speed. Would have been nice if we could have retained her a little bit longer. Rather than her auto detachment. Oh, actually we're well within range of torpedo bombers on some Russian base in the middle of the ocean, possibly the carrier, and should we know that? Can we see one? Kinburn takes a hit. Up there. Using that old cross deck firing. Oktron is definitely not feeling good anymore. Five knots. Come around. Atkinson takes a penetrating bar belt hit from the archipelago. Oh, or archipelago. About to say. Let's see if we can't nick the Fokshani and we might have to retreat because this is just a little too much gunfire. Alright. Ismail, Fokshani. Come in. Sweep around close to the Vokshani on her starboard side, as that should block some of their gunfire. Elgalan taking a built extended hit. Should be still doing. Yeah, she has no flotation damage. Heavy hit on the Kirov. Alright, come around, angle in. Yeah, that's working out all right. As long as we don't angle too heavily against the oh, electrical power disabled. Down to 10 knots. All right, let's turn around. Shawnee takes one more 11 inch hit. Tons of five inch secondaries are getting in. There's three three eleven inch. Okay, the gazelle rakes her. Yeah, the battle cruisers are tearing her up now. 
Heavy damage on fire. Niobe takes an electrical power hit. You can tell she's maneuvering very slowly because of that electrical damage. Which, that should be a kind of uh, special damage condition, and it should be cleared at some point. Not that we'll get everything back that we lost from that hit. What are you guys doing? You just go go south. Go somewhere. Actually. Go find the Braunschweig. Support her. That'll get you out of uh, harm's way. Unless you turn towards them. Oh my goodness. What are they doing? Oh, and the uh, Russian Dreadnought fleet shows up. More interesting maneuvering than how our guns are performing now. Zell not doing too well. Not bad, though. Atkinson's doing all right. I always got some flooding. I'm a little worried about her. What we really need is our army of destroyers back. What are they doing? All right, I'm gonna put you into core with Bronchwick. Go down to her. There we go. Now they're turning the right direction. Going broadside to a division of battle cruisers. Silliness. I think the Fokshani is done for. Certainly hope so. About to take a bit of a pounding now. Elgaland's back up. Looks like her electrical system has recovered and she's coming up in speed. Might go due south. Might have a torpedo shot at the Sevastopol. Zell's got engine room flooding. Helgeland has engine room penetration. These guys are using eight 15 inch guns, and at this range, they're gonna go straight through our belt. Well, got a, bo a bounce on the Mackinson from the. Octia Briskaya Revolutia. Um, but if you look at the angle of that, skipped along. This fast pool takes 14 inch. Elgaland loses a turret. Alright, in that case, we're going to turn away. And. Focus on disengaging at this point. As our carriers continue to flee to the northwest. What are they doing? Five attack, one torpedo bomber. That was happening to do recon. We did launch a torpedo at some point. Mackinson taking multiple hits. We're, we're going to lose something. This festival is falling out of position while the rest of them move forward to close in. If that's the case, engage more closely. Trade fire with them. Keep coming around, we can stay on this side of the destroyer, they won't launch at us. Plenty of penetrating hits now. Let's see about getting a torpedo launched, avoiding torpedoes ourselves. 
and plenty of gunfire in. No torpedoes working now. El Gland has plenty of flotation damage, will not survive the battle. No, not with that sort of damage. This is a case of us not having the right ships at the right time. El Gland sinking. No surprises there. As well as not having new modern dreadnoughts. Falling behind in the race. I've lost focus. I'm blaming this one mostly on myself. Wait for the Helgeland to sink so I can take command of the rest. Not that I expect I'll be able to extract my battle cruisers. Carriers might make it. If they leave. Land hit by dud. Yeah, no, no sense in that anymore. All right, battle cruisers continue to do their thing, including going too fast. This may be the first war we lose, which is fine. Prefer not to. You can go entire campaigns without uh, losing if you really play to the game's weaknesses. I don't really like doing that. And part of this uh, series has been figuring out, all right, how far can we go with the uh, Super Dreadnought concept? Not that we're building very many of them. I don't feel like we're really exploring it. So I'm going to have to refocus on that. The Helgeland sunk yet? No. Continuing to stubbornly stay afloat. And I detach her to get the game to allow me to control the battlecruisers. No. Our battle cruisers are going to continue to get pounded, surrounded by opposing battle cruisers and dreadnoughts, while we can't do control them. Zell's done. He just took a torpedo. It's also highlighting some of the disadvantages you get from playing in admiral mode, where you can't really control things. Not very well. The land has finally sunk. Finally get control of the Mackinson, I suppose? Just in time to watch her not survive. At least we got one of their more modern battle cruisers. Or was it? No, no, this one was old. Oh, yeah, that, that's no fun either. Wow, still not giving us control. Can I take control? No. Is the Braunschweig? No, I didn't give us control of the Braunschweig. Continue to follow the Mackinson then. It's noon, there's no hope of sunset saving us. Probably gonna end up recalling a lot of the other ships and playing very cagey. Niobe takes a destroyer, uh, takes a destroyer, takes a torpedo, and another one. No, the message is blank, but it's it's a torpedo. Gazelle has sunk. Naobi and Mackinson are dead in the water. Game is no longer pausing on damage anymore. K 
carrier division is currently far enough away though. Niobe has sunk. Braunschweig is set as the flagship. Outstanding. Where are you? Take a torpedo and you get to survive. She is almost back to port. Mackinson is sunk. Our most modern battlecruisers are no more. Speed up to run out the clock. Fortunately, the light carriers are next. Did not get to survive for long. Oh, well, maybe. There we go. Bob Max, get out of dodge. Stop. Don't turn randomly. Go. Stop. Oh, we lost one. Yeah, that's odd. That allows you to cheat because you can see where theirs is. I mean, maybe it's a projected posi uh, position because we see their aircraft moving around. Yep, go ahead and enter port. And there we go. Loss of one dreadnought, three battlecruisers to the loss of one of their battlecruisers. Air details. The uh, lost in air combat. Nobody. Lose two prestige. Battle of Gotland. Lose three prestige. That's Kaiser. We are now blockaded. So this may be like the uh, the French and Russian war we had earlier. Get all of our ships back to Northern Europe. Get them raiding. Why? Because everyone's a raider. Including the carriers, maybe? No reason not to. Our trade protection. These do not count for foreign tonnage when they're raiding, do they? They might. We have the money, we could design a new ship right now. But, where is our AMC Brookswald? Get rid of those and put on some of these. We switch to medium anti-aircraft. Yep, and I want the cheaper coal for these. Not that it's that much cheaper. Might as well use the oil. For all the mines. I think range is going to matter that much. I'll make them a bit. That really doesn't cost that much more. So we'll do it. And that costs more, but it's not that big a deal, honestly. Brookswald. Design. Yes. Alright. Get some of those going. Very over new mine lane. Some in the Indian Ocean. Ah, oh, right, because of all those destroyers. They're going to Northeast Asia and I'm 
inclined to let inclined to let them. Less horsepower requirement, better airship performance. And there's the kind of merchant shipping we expect to sink when we start doing these tactics. Well, if you look, our our purpose-built raiders are sinking quite a few. This ought to be interesting. Unable to create. That's a bad sign. Hopefully that didn't just break the game. It looks like our raiding ships do indeed on foreign stations still count to be on foreign stations. We get our Thetis heading up to Northeast Asia. You know what? I'll I'll give the neutral. If they give us lenient terms, it's fine. What did they take? A better flying boat, much better speed, better bomb load, slightly better range, a little bit tougher. They take anything? Doesn't look like it. Alrighty then. Well, this gives us an opportunity to really settle things out then. Got my mine laying destroyers, and I like them as mine laying destroyers, and I'd like to keep them. Let's open this design for rebuild. Or not. I kind of want to do more light cruisers as the mine layers. Get more of these nymphs out. But uh, really not the focus anymore. I think for certain our Vondertans are very old now. I'm going to scrap them because they're also slow. We lost our more modern ones. The Mackinsons. I don't think the Graf Spays are going to do even a fraction as well. We'll scrap those two. Helgeland did okay. You know what? I'll scrap that one too. I'm going to move from here. Katami. All forward main armament. Which I might entertain that. Get all these guys in reserve. Go ahead and scrap these ones. Carriers can go into reserve. Our raiders can also go into reserve. That leaves our foreign station heavy cruisers. While we're waiting for some monthly balance to come back, which should be happening soon, we'll give it one more month. Hmm, better damage control. And weight savings on turrets. Okay, so those are the two that just came out. Put them on reserve. Now we go to design. We want a new dreadnought. I don't want doubles. I want triples. And 
and I want the better aft turret. Uh, let's take a look at the 16. Point two inch belt. Six and a half inch deck. 20 and 6. So I will stick with the 14 inch triples just to have more guns. I think you have better quality 6 inch now. And do the 4 inch as the dual purpose armament. Max those out. Do 12 6 inch. And triples so we can put some decent armor on them. If we wanted to self armor, it would be six and a half. Call it seven. Put the 14s on. We would need 21 inch turret, which we can do. I mean, they would be immune to their own guns. For now. And then over time, that range will edge out. I'm okay with that. Turret top wise, we would need six to do that. It would be very heavy. As we've seen with the Conning Tower, I like to, like to do that as much as possible. I almost want to try a sloped deck approach in the late war, but I don't want to play risky right now. I'm going to go a little bit light. Expect most of our engagements to be under 20,000 yards. Let's go with 4 inches acceptable. Do an inclined belt, more likely to hit the deck then. But the deck we're leaving, leaving kind of weak. Oil. I'm going to use normal reliability, medium range. Way too heavy, but we can fix that, sort of. Now she's gigantic. Maximum torpedo defense. Accommodation is fine. Then we can remove those to save the weight there. Yeah, only dual purpose singles. I have increased elevation. We definitely want more ammunition, seeing how we go through it all, especially when we're outnumbered. Sea plane hanger, add a catapult. Let's see. Stick the catapult, we do Congo style, stick it in this position. Legal mount designation. Uh, yes. Let's see, how is she doing so far? That is fine. So we need to do a W. Where else could we put it? Q. R would bring it there. I think that conflicts a little bit. Do the L. That intersects the forward funnel. Do the C. That kind of 
interferes with the forward turret. So unless we want to do a midships ones, like one on each side, not against that. We're not going to have that many seaplanes. I think I'll do it Congo style. We'll do it in the W mount. How many do you get? Doesn't matter. I also weigh a lot. Two, three. I like three. And we're way overweight, so we need to get rid of stuff. How big are the 16 inch? Drop to 4,500, we'd say 2,500 on that. And then the turrets would be... Uh, to give you some insight, I'm thinking of doing... This. To get the armor that I would like to have. I'm going to reduce our guns, I don't like doing that. But, uh, this is not looking particularly, having the number of guns on the 14 inch doesn't look too feasible. I think we'll do that though. We'll, we'll go with the four triple turrets. Yeah, that works out. Could do duels. That puts us at eight barrels instead of 12 and that's still, it's almost as bad as the six. The six, at least, would be a heavier caliber. Gotta save some weight somewhere. Right now, we're using a lot of armor, according to that. Armor is fairly heavy. Could drop these down to four inch. Put the dual purpose there. Get rid of the tertiary guns. Drop the secondaries to two inch gun shield. I reduced it somewhat, not terribly though. Drop the turrets to 18 and 5. Saves a couple thousand pounds. Or tons, I should say. The engines don't take that much. I'm aware that there's no conning tower included in this. Could draw one, but my skills are not particularly good at that. Could try a thinner deck, but that gets dangerous on its own. How low would it go? 11 inch belt. Not much. Makes this almost more of a battle cruiser. I don't know, that's kind of a, a rough decision. We could do this one as more of a a fast battleship design. And then, uh, once we get some of these, we may take a look at potentially doing a sort of heavier, more armored Dreadnought. Try my hand at a little drawing here. Eh, it's fine. At least gives it an impression of something up there. I would like to have something though. Oh, I think it's it is drawn, but this overlays that.
No? Well, wh whatever. I'm not going to futz with the uh, superstructure. I'm not that concerned about it. It's given me time to think about this, though. Am I happy with it? No. But am I going to go with it? Yes. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother with the, the light A. About five rounds, which, yeah, I know, we have a lot of rounds. How much can I get back if I do that? Eleven and a half, twelve. Twelve and a half. Okay, we'll do twelve and a half. That gets us something back. Our new Elsass. We'll be ready to go in a few months' time. So, that was a pretty unsuccessful war with Russia. Uh, woke us up to the realities. We've fallen back behind way farther than I thought we had. So, we've scrapped our battle line and we're looking to restructure it. With that, I have to reevaluate how much we're spending on naval aircraft. So that is literally, we can build two dreadnoughts instead of just one. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at that, um, and with that, I think it's time to wrap up. Thank you for sticking to the end. Uh, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. Take care.